So I understand that many of you may be starting to get a little bit tired of the starting to get long in the tooth Ryzen ITX build videos. However, if you did miss those and you are interested in seeing those, you can click the card specifically for the last one, which showed you how to mod the Ryzen's stock Spire cooler and get lower temperatures and fit it into a node 202. And since we dealt with our CPU temperatures in the last video, I felt it was appropriate to sort of wrap up the mini ITX Ryzen build series with dealing with the graphics card temperatures in this video. So for those of you that are not completely familiar with the Node 202, it does have a couple of fan slots available to it. Specifically, a pair of 120 millimeter fans can fit inside of the graphics card compartment. Now, of course, fitting those fans into the graphics card compartment does require that your graphics card itself is not something like a really fat card, something like two and a half or a three slot card. However, being that I had a uh, 1070 SC edition from EVGA, that was not a problem for me. The reason that you may want to put in a pair of fans or just one fan into that area is because the graphics card itself sits a little bit away from the graphics card vent, which means it's pulling air not just from that vent itself, especially when it's in the horizontal laying down position, but it's also pulling air from inside the graphics card compartment already. And if you don't have a blower style card, it's actually probably recirculating quite a bit of that hot air that it's already run through its cooler, which will lead to higher temperatures. So today I wanted to test fan configurations inside the graphics card compartment with the idea being if you run one or two fans at very low RPMs, they would be barely audible, but they may have a big impact on the graphics card temperatures themselves. So we have four tests and before we hop into those tests, I will point out that because I'm using a 1070 SC, it may make a bigger difference or a lesser difference on my card than other cards. So while these test results may be indicative of what you'll find if you're running my graphics card specifically, if you're running a different graphics card, you may have to experiment with the fan locations and configuration of your chassis to see what gives you the best temperatures. So that being said, we ran the chassis in both horizontal and vertical alignments for all of these configurations, including no fans at all in the graphics card compartment. That was more or less our control. Then we ran one fan directly over the actual GPU on the graphics card itself. We ran one fan over the non-GPU side of the graphics card. And then of course we ran the test with both fan slots filled with these Fantex 120 millimeter PWM fans. Unsurprisingly, with our configuration having no graphics card fans additionally added at all, we saw horizontal temperatures at their maximum at 88, and the vertical alignment temperatures were also at their maximum at 81 degrees Celsius. Adding in one fan on the graphics processor side of the graphics card gave us a nice bump in horizontal temperatures, keeping those down at 82 degrees, and the vertical configuration gained even more falling clear down to 70 degrees. Celsius. Moving that one fan over to the non-graphics processor side of the graphics card saw the horizontal configuration actually lose even more temperature, falling down to 79 degrees Celsius, and the vertical configuration doing the same, stabilizing at 69 degrees Celsius. That being said, I do not have a thermostat in the room that I was doing the testing, therefore it is possible that these temperatures fall within the margin of error, and they may basically be the same in the end. Regardless, it will require you to do a little bit of your own research and experimentation if you are adding one fan to your node 202. Either way, adding one fan does see big gains. And finally, and also unsurprisingly, adding two fans and filling both of those fan brackets with 120 millimeter fans does give us our best overall temperatures with the horizontal configuration coming in at 75 degrees Celsius and the vertical configuration coming in at its lowest at 68 degrees Celsius. Although again, worth noting with that vertical configuration, that does seem to be within the margin of error considering the room's temperature. Now, as I said, my testing is really only indicative of a setup that uses the exact same graphics card as I have. I do not know how other GPUs will react depending on their thermal solutions. However, this should give you a good at least idea of how you can help lower those thermals on your graphics card if you're using the Node 202. It's also worth noting that for the fan profiles in the BIOS settings, I use the Quiet Profile on my Biostar ITX board, which kept those fans at a barely audible and definitely not audible over the uh, actual graphics card fan level. And the idea there was just to feed the graphics card some fresh air from outside of the chassis, and that seemed to work pretty well. 
So that pretty much wraps up our Node 202 series, but you can let me know in the comments down below any suggestions you may have to further help out those thermals inside of the Node 202, whether it be on the CPU side or on the GPU side. Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, if you are interested in some of the products I talked about in this video, check out the description down below for a little more information. If you like this video, give me a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Those help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.